Anyone involved in competitive sports knows the feeling of putting in a lot of effort and time, but not achieving their goals and falling short of their ambitions. This is especially true in tournament brackets, where you're guaranteed to lose unless you win the entire tournament. Since you can't win every bracket, it's essential to learn how to handle the feats, and more importantly, how to focus on the relevant problems. I've been participating in tournaments for a long time, which has given me the opportunity to encounter many perspectives related to improvement. Many players base their improvement on the tournament placings or the number of sets they have won, but in my opinion, that's a horrible mistake. When I started with Smash and focused on active improvement, I became fixated on who I beat, how many victories I had and at which round I got eliminated. However, the main issue with all of this and something that should never be overlooked is understanding why you win or lose in the first place. As I began coaching and reviewing matches for people, I noticed that many players struggle with this aspect of self-reflection. Why did you win that game, set or tournament? Why did you lose? Did you play better or was your opponent just having a bad day? Focusing primarily on one's own gameplay is crucial to see whether you're getting better or still making the same mistakes as before. Whether you go 0-2, 2-2, place first or even drawn in pools, in back-to-back -back tournaments doesn't matter much if your gameplay and mistakes remain the same. Setting milestones is, of course, a sensible approach and I won't deny that I do it too, but what's important is prioritizing and considering the long-term outlook. For instance, I've won several games, sets and tournaments, but I'm often dissatisfied with my gameplay afterwards because I made obvious mistakes and didn't play as clearly as I would have liked based on my own standards. It's unrealistic to always expect the best from yourself, but instead of resting on a win, I reflect on why I won in the first place and what made me better than my opponent at that particular moment. It's essential to understand that even losses that may seem one-sided on paper can still give you valuable information to recognize whether you've improved or not. For example, at a big regional back in 2022, Reno beat me 3-0 in the top 8 qualifier, but I refocused and tried to improve my gameplay for the rematch in the losers finals. I played much better than the top 8 qualifier, but I still lost. There's no reason to be down or a lengthy whiny post on Twitter about why I lost. My gameplay wasn't good enough, but it was an improvement from the first encounter. The player who relies heavily on outcome bias will probably not care about the gameplay differences in the rematch, but will instead just focus on the fact that Reno beat me twice in a row, with me not even taking a game. In 2015, Pete Carroll, the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks, made a controversial decision during the annual Super Bowl against the New England Patriots. With just seconds remaining in the game and the Seahawks trailing by 4 points, he had the ball on the Patriots' 1 yard line. Instead of handing the ball off to Marshawn Lynch to potentially score a game winning touchdown, Carroll called for a pass play. The pass was intercepted by Malcolm Butler, sealing the victory for New England. Many football fans criticized Pete Carroll for this play and many say it was the worst call in football history. But Pete stood by the call. It was the worst result of a call ever. The call would have been a great one if we catch it. The majority of fans focus on the outcome and the loss itself and don't take other factors into account. Because according to Pete, they planned for the situation. Sports psychologist Eli Straw emphasizes why outcome bias can hurt you in one of his articles. Outcome-oriented thinking is one of the worst mindsets you can adopt as an athlete. While sports are full of outcomes and it's how you are judged as a performer, they can't be your concern, especially when you're competing. Worrying about the outcome pulls your attention away from what you're doing. It leads to increased anxiety, fear of failure and reduces your focus. Especially when you frequently play in the same region, you can fall into a mindset trap without even realizing it. You may win against someone not necessarily because you've improved and advanced your own gameplay, but because you've played against the same person for the 100th time in a row and your opponent was just having a bad day. Outcome biasless players believe they did something different because the result was different, when in reality nothing in the gameplay even changed. If you start to focus on the relevant stuff, you will get good wins, placings, the power rank and placement you've been aiming for, or maybe even a tournament win. If not, then your gameplay or preparation simply wasn't good enough and you'll need to do better next time. If you focus too much on the outcome of the match and or results in general, it can impact your play and even worse, your ego. Of course, every achievement should be celebrated, but don't lose sight of the essential aspects if you claim that you want to improve and have ambitions. But if you want to consistently have good wins and placings, focus 100% on your gameplay and on your mindset and the rest will follow. Thank you for watching.